When confronted by conservative MP Giovanni, CBC president and CEO is forced to run and hide behind the committee chair. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Outgoing CBC president and CEO Catherine Tate was called before the Heritage Committee and MP Giovanni confronted her on her expenditures at the Olympics and other issues about the $18 million in bonuses, not to mention the idea that she's going to be getting two years worth of bonuses as part of her exit package that won't even be under the scrutiny of the taxpayer. Now, it was a pretty heated exchange. I only cut out about 10 seconds where when Catherine Tate runs and hides behind the chair, which the, the chair, of course, jumped right on, MP Giovanni, uh, I'll talk about that at the end, but I cut out where she tried to throw in a whole bunch of myths and disinformation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Ms. Tate, I just want to clarify a couple of things that I heard today. Uh, so first, did you say that you were on a personal trip to France, decided to extend your vacation, go to the Olympics, and then bill the taxpayer for it? Is that correct? I was on a personal trip to France, and I did not bill the taxpayer for my flight or travel from Canada. What did you bill the taxpayer for? The hotel and the train to get to Paris. Where does your personal trip end and your the day I taxpayer get, billing begin? When I, as part of my job being at the, at the opening of the Olympics, was absolutely expected of me, so I interrupted my holiday and took the four days to go to the Olympics. Could you understand why that sounds concerning to somebody? Just because, you know, a bit of a weird situation where you get to go on a trip, you're having your personal time, and then you just unilaterally get to decide what becomes work and what doesn't? Well, not if I'm not charging the company for the trip. But you did charge the taxpayer six thousand dollars. Correct. For your when time I was in working in Paris, I did yes. And you, but could you understand why it would be concerning? I would think that it would be concerning. I would be. It would be concerning if the CEO of CBC Radio Canada did not attend the opening of the Olympics, given it was one of the most important events of our calendar year. But when the average Canadian hears that you're charging thousands of dollars to the taxpayer and you are just kind of deciding when your personal time ends and your billable time begins, it, it, it gets to sort of a broader concern and to the point about bonuses that many of our colleagues have made today of whether you have respect for the taxpayer. Can you see why that would be concerning to the average Canadian? I do not make those decisions alone. I always check in with my chair and, and I behave in a responsible fashion. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to uh, ask if you agree with a statement that's been attributed to you. Uh, and I'm going to quote, the defund narrative has picked up momentum, especially as it relates to CBC television. Did that come from you? Yes. Okay. So that was reported uh, last week by the National Post from an email they obtained from you, and I believe in January 2024. Is that correct? I, I presume so, yes. Okay. So when you look at the concerns over your expenses, right, which I think legitimate concerns over where your personal vacation time ends and where your billable time begins, when you see the concerns over news stories related to your bonuses that are going out and bonuses you may receive or executives receive, the $18 million that we've been talking about today, do you think any of that might contribute to what you yourself have observed as a growing movement to defund the CBC? <laughs> I absolutely do not. Why is that? Because I believe that ha having experienced now the third um, appearance at this committee, I would say that there is a, um, a, a clear effort on the part of members of this committee to create, to vilify, and to discredit me and to discredit the organization. Not mm. one question has so, been asked, excuse me, not one question has been asked about the accomplishments of the public broadcaster over the last six years and well, how we I, have I, I think our liberal years. colleagues have asked you some of those questions, so I think you're, that's not a fair representation of your time here today. But let's go back to something that our colleague, Mr. Koto, asked you earlier. You referred to KPIs, key performance indicators. Would the idea that a growing movement in our country would like to defund your organization 
discussion be weighed into an analysis of key performance indicators and determining whether the discretionary portions of the bonuses that you've acknowledged there is a percentage that is discretionary and not contractually obligated that those percentages that you might consider hmm if people don't like what we're doing if people don't trust us if people would like the government to take money away from our bloated organization maybe we shouldn't be spending more of their money than we have to is that could, could that not cross your mind in analyzing the KPIs? We do not take into consideration political wins or influences in our in determining our business metrics. So you would you would call it a political reaction for the average Canadian to hear that you're doling out 18 million dollars in bonuses that you're billing the taxpayer for your time in Paris while on a personal vacation. That's a political concern that the average Canadian wouldn't have a pure interest in that based purely on the fact that they are giving you their hard-earned money through taxes? I'm not uh, sure uh, I understand uh, uh, what he's getting at on this question. That, that, that's 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 you're, 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 you're trying to marginalize legitimate concerns about abuse of taxpayer dollars and any accountability that we are trying as parliamentarians Madam to in introduce here, and you're saying it's purely political. And what I'm saying is the big, beautiful, growing movement to defund the CBC is not a purely political movement, but is a matter of taxpayer accountability. Can you not acknowledge that? I will not, uh, Madam Chair, I will not be accused of abusing taxpayer no. dollars. I'm sorry no, for the no. record. We have managed our uh, budget extremely carefully. We were facing a hundred million dollars. I don't think the Canadian people I don't think the Canadian people would agree with you. Ivani, will you allow? They believe that CBC should be in the future of this country. Is that so reported on by the CBC? Is that, I think that we've facts? gone <laughs> over time, Mr. Giovanni. Thank you very much. So now I don't like that chair because she can't maintain neutrality. She treats all of the MPs differently depending on their political affiliation. I definitely don't like the CBC Tate who talks about how her decisions are never rooted in politics. And yet if you turn on the CBC, it's all totally 100% far left programming. There's not even anything in the center in there anymore. It's just completely and utterly far left. And that's why, of course, it's not making any money. That's why people are not watching. And that's why people don't trust it because it's rooted completely and wholeheartedly in, in, the, in the woke. And people don't want to see it. People don't like it. People don't agree with it. So they, they take their, uh, their time elsewhere. Of course, you can't expect, expect her to understand that when she tries to, you know, dance around the, the subject so broadly. Also, I would like to say that MP Giovanni, for being a, you know, a rookie, is pretty on, on spot on, right? He's not being, he doesn't let any of them push him around. I mean, there could be some pushback against the chair. That's the second time the chair has sort of put him in, like sort of got him to back off. And he really should be saying to her, this is my time, not your time and not the, the, that person's time, not the witness's time. So I will say what I want when I want it because it's my time, not their time. And if they're not going to answer the question as asked, then why should I let them speak? But I imagine that he will get his legs underneath him. I think that as he speaks right now, it's pretty good. It's pretty articulate. And I, I enjoy the fact that no matter what she said, he called her out on it. I think that it's hilarious that this big, you know, strong, independent female would have to run behind the chair and say, oh, no, I'm not going to let the big bad question, you know, make me look bad. When the reality is, is that your actions are what make you look bad. It's not the question, not the question's fault. It's your actions. It's your behavior. Of course, if you weren't a far left elitist, you would understand that if you didn't think in your mind that people don't have the right to confront you over your actions, if you didn't think in your mind that somehow you were above the scrutiny of the common person, you might understand exactly what, what's happening here. You might understand why people are so cross and so upset with the behavior and the outcome of your tenure. I do like the way that it ended, though. She tried to say that, oh, this massive percentage of Canadians are excited that the that they want the CBC and that it's the most trusted news source in Canada, the CBC. And he just said, "Is that as reported on by the CBC?" Which was, you know, pretty funny, pretty funny. And of course, you saw when the chair jumped in again to rescue her from the truth or from the from being asked a question that might make her look bad. It's pretty uh, pretty obvious where where the political lines are being drawn inside of there, and of course. That didn't bother Miss Tate at all. All of a sudden, right now, it didn't bother her at all, that kind of politics. I personally think that they should be left to the free market or they should be representing all of Canada, not just one segment of, pol of the political spectrum. But that's just my opinion. 
You let me know what your opinion is down in the comments. I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.